Nobody understands me. <laughs> Worst marathon ever. Hello, folks. Welcome once again. Your worst nightmare has come true. <laughs> Daily, that gets my goat episodes without editing. And any real purpose or direction. Yeah, that's, but that's sort of par for the course. Oh, okay. I mean, it's, how often do we write something down and prepare something and for, for the that gets my goat? It's almost never, <laughs> right? Yeah, I suppose that's the point of it. So you had another question you wanted to ask me concerning the topic well, of YA or UA whole fiction. I think we could talk for hours about UA whole fiction. <laughs> um, just because I guess I it's something new that is still your world is frightening and confusing to me. It's something that I still haven't quite got my head around. And like everything, obviously things can be done well and things can be done badly. But in this book that I'm reading right now, because I, I'm reading it right now, it, it's all so apparent, the things that I like and the things that I don't like. And, and yes, it's got a youthful 17-year-old protagonist, because that's the magic number, like you just said. And, and I didn't, that didn't occur to me, but I'm thinking of the other YA that I've read, and they're, they're always 17. And I'm thinking of, like, the teen stories that I write and I, I guess You're thinking about the Teen Beat magazines and the Tiger Beat magazines that you right. read oh with Michael J. It's Fox and Ralph Macchio on the cover olds. oh my gosh <laughs> the nights I spent with those magazines I'm thinking of the things that I write too 17 seems to be a magical number and, and for me it's because that's usually senior year of high yeah, school in that's America that's what I was going to say and in the Harry Potter universe, that's when a boy becomes a man, when somebody enters like the wizarding adulthood, and a woman becomes a little girl too. <laughs> Sorry, something like eh? that. But I, I just I like that number because it's uh, I don't know. I, well, there's a certain freedom of knowing it's your last year of high school, and and by the time you're 17, you should be able to drive and all that. And I, I don't know. Marty McFly was 17. And for some reason, that's the perfect age for your teen protagonist. I wouldn't surprise me if Luke Skywalker was supposed to be 17 in that movie. Anyhow, why the hell am I talking about this? Because I keep finding, discovering all these moments when I'm reminded that this is YA fiction, despite being graphically violent. And it's mostly when characters do really, really stupid things without thinking or without logic. And I'm just like, wait, whoa, whoa, why? And I find myself yelling at the audiobook. Or if, you know, if I'm reading it a, a, a book at home, I will, I will start to talk back to the book or I will close it. Because there will be these giant leaps where logic has been swiftly avoided. <laughs> And part of it is, well, because you want the story to go a certain direction. And so you have to have misunderstandings or you have to have these characters ignore the obvious question that they should ask. Or you have to have any number of things. And, and is that a tenant of YA or is that just a tenant of bad writing? I'm sure it's more a tenant of bad writing than a tenant of YA. When you... Get your characters, and we we can complain about that. I mean, I'm sure we have already this year about characters doing things that are stupid in movies that don't make sense because they need to move the plot along. I mean, we talked about that stupid thing in Superman where, uh, sorry, I keep calling it Superman, but Superman was a good movie. In Man of Steel, where they come down and they say, we need this woman to accompany us, accompany us onto the ship. Because, well, not for any really good reason, but we do need a plot device. And they bring Lois Lane onto the ship for no good reason at all. That kind of stuff happens in badly written stories. And yeah, Ke Kevin Smith was talking about that on his podcast. And he said, well, maybe Zod wanted to have sex with her. And the thing is, okay, yeah, if that had been the case, we could have bought. He's like, ooh, that woman appeals to me. Ha bring her aboard as well. But it wasn't. It was some arbitrary thing. And they didn't know that Clark had this... Sorry, Clark. That where, what, what was he at that point? Was he, he was only Clark Kent. Yeah. They didn't know that Clark had feelings for this girl. 
like they did at Superman 2, where it's like, you know, if he cares so much about these Earth creatures, let us take his favorite. She just happened to be there, and the story said, you have to take her along, too, so we can find something for her to do, right? Yeah. I mean, was there any... Did she say, take me, too? No. Did, was she holding on to Superman's arm, and they're like, oh, hey, look oh, at this. Yeah, no, they, she, she was back behind the thing by the time they arrived. They didn't, yeah, it was just, there was no good reason for it. And worse yet, they took her onto the ship and then never acknowledged her either. And so there was never an, a reason that she should have been on there. So it was completely stupid. And yeah, it's a, a thing that happens in badly written stories where you just do something arbitrarily to move the plot along. I mean, that's often when you find your characters doing things that are really stupid. Especially when, I mean, one thing, if your character is just generally a stupid person and he does really stupid things, and you've seen him do other really stupid things before or something, so now it fits with your character's character. Does that happen a lot in books? I don't think so, but I guess, you know, that's the other thing that you talk about. You know, when something like this happens and they do something that's contrary to what you've been led to believe this character is like all of a sudden oh now they're going to do something crazy when they've been you know it's been rammed down your throat the the whole intro to the book that this person is a very cautious person and now they just throw caution to the wind and they do something crazy and you're just like ah oh, this person's character wouldn't do that you just did this so that the plot would advance you suck i hate you yeah that's your your bad writing technique that you find well now in defense of teenagers everywhere Teenagers are stupid. <laughs> this is the I was for the teenager. I was a teenager, and I did things without thinking. I did things because oh, somebody told me not to, or oh, I wonder if I can. I did things that could have gotten me killed, because, frankly, my brain was not yet developed to its adult level of reason, and. You know, there was, there's also a huge instant gratification desire in, in a teenager. It's like, oh, I want it now. And it's like, no, I, tonight, it's right now, you know, kind of thing. I don't want to wait, and I, I don't want to work for it, and I don't, all that stuff. And it's something that needs to be taught to somebody. It's like, you know, there are things that you're going to have to work for. Or there's things you're not going to get now, or there are things that, sorry, it's, it's better if you... If you earn this, it will be better if you earn this, you know, I, I, or sorry, you can't go out tonight. And so, I mean, I can see that in writing a teenager, in thinking back and saying, yeah, I did stupid things and I didn't even know why I did it. But I don't, is that a crutch? Is that something that you can actually use as an excuse? I think you can use that, but you can't use it as a crutch or an excuse. It's got to be, you know, like you say, I'm going to do it because somebody told me not to, you know. And if you portray that in the book so that you understand why they're doing something stupid, then it works. But if they just do something stupid and you're just like, oh, you're an idiot and I hate you. You're a worthless character. Why did I care whether you got killed or not? I don't care anymore because you're stupid. Then, you know. It doesn't work. I'm sure it it's, it's requires that explanation. You know what I mean? If somebody tells you not to, and you're like, "Oh, sh- you can't tell me what to do. I'm I'm a, I'm growing. I can make my own decisions." And then you do it, and problems happen. Then that makes you know that works. But yeah, if they just do something for no good reason, or do something illogical without a good reason, yeah, then that's it doesn't work. I think, anyway. Not like I'm a friggin' book publisher or but even a published author. <laughs> but you've read a lot of stuff. I mean, in my experience, you've read a lot of stuff. I mean, somebody... Uh, like, whenever I have a conversation with Abby Hilton, I feel like I've never read a book in my life because she's so well-read. But she's also really, really smart, and maybe it takes her three days to read a book that would take me a month. I don't know. But you, because of your enormous... She feels the same way, by the way, when you talk to her about movies. Because she's seen as many movies as you see in a week, in like a year. So I think everybody has their expertise. Are you and, playing matchmaker right now? or what? <laughs> yeah, and, and therefore you should get together with her. Okay. Call her up now. <laughs> All right, I will call her while we're podcasting, see how that goes. The other thing 
in this book is there was a love interest. Mm-hmm. I mean, because I guess there has to be. I, I guess. I know we've talked about that with superhero movies. There has to be a love interest because F you. F, F. <laughs> um, there's a love interest and that's fine, you know, because as a teenager, your hormones are going and you discover the opposite sex or your same sex or you discover whatever you happen to discover because we are sexual beings and teenager is when you start becoming an, a, a young adult. Hey, what? I discovered the answer. Oh, it's not you a-hole? And... I'm fine with that. I mean, sometimes it's arbitrary and sometimes it's done badly, but it's something we have all experienced unless you haven't. And I was fine with it. And then suddenly in the story up arises a second love interest. And oh my goodness, the loud booming voice of Captain Arbitrary said, this shall be so. And I realized, holy crap, this is jackhammered in there because of Twilight. (laughs) Because that's all anybody responded to in Twilight. Okay, now I take it back. That's not all anybody responded. That is what everybody responded to in Twilight. And girls are still talking about, whose team are you on? It's like, well, Bella has a kid now. (laughs) I think it's fair to say Team Edward won. But they're like, oh, no. And and when I hear people say team for other books and stuff, it makes me want to kill. I I do. I just I want to just start unloading automatic weapons (laughs) in shopping malls or places where people actually do it. And you're not supposed to make jokes about it. But I, when people talk about the love triangle that's at the heart of the Hunger Games books, my stomach just tightens up. And you know what? It's not even my stomach. It's my sphincter. Oh. Because that's not at the heart of those books. Is it? I mean, is that what those books are all about? <laughs> are, are you team whoever wants to bang Katniss? Or are you team the other guy that wants to bang Katniss? I'm the guy who wants to bang Katniss. So I'm, I win. I'm team the other guy. I just, I don't. I, I <laughs> and, and I understand that men and women are not the same or boys and girls are not the same or you have to sit down when you go pee-pee and I don't. But those books were about like a dystopian futuristic society where people were being hunted and forced to hunt each other as a way to like keep the, uh, the, the masses in their place and all that stuff. And one girl who is strong enough to say no and, and maybe smart enough to stay alive in a situation where she shouldn't that's my impression of those books. Did I miss the mark? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I don't think so. Yeah, that's definitely... They're not at the heart of the story. They do exist, and they are part of the story, but they're not the heart of the story. Unless you are speaking of the heart as the thing that makes you fall in love, and then I guess maybe you could say that. Because that's what they put up on all the Valentine's Day things is hearts. But okay. otherwise, I don't, uh, if they're using that phrase correctly, instead of like saying, you know, I could care less, um, <laughs> if they're using did. it correctly, then yeah, that's incorrect to say that it's the heart of the story. Okay, so I keep not using the title of the, this book, and I'm not really sure why, but let's say that it came out in 2011, because it did. Is there any chance that this love triangle thing was always intended to be part of the book? Or is there every chance that this was calculated as something that is popular in a YA book? I'm sure. And will help it resonate well, yeah. in the hearts of... I'm not sure, but I think it's pretty likely that it was a calculated thing. Sadly, I've even done it myself. I've thought about that and thought, you know what? I have a story that's paranormal romance or something, but... Maybe I need to change it around so the woman's the main character, because women are the ones that buy the majority of books out there. So maybe if I change that story and wrote it that way, then I could sell it and I could make huge money. Which is kind of sad, and I'm sure it would turn out worse because of it, because I can't write a woman as well as I can write a man. I guarantee that. Well, okay, let's say that you sold out. Let's say that you published this book. Would it be obvious to your readers that 
this has been switched around so as to crassly sell more copies? Possible and possibly not. I, I can't say if it would be obvious. Some things are more obvious and some things just because it's the trend, you, you spot it. And then other things, are just it just seems... And I, and I have to admit, talking about that paranormal romance idea that I had, it seems like it could work better if the if female was the main character. Because then the bad guy could be a man, and men are bad. Well, yes, that is true. But women are not. No, they are not. <laughs> but so you <laughs> never pitched that to me with a female main character. You've always told me the way that it was. No, originally. you're thinking of a different story, so it's I, I may be confusing you with it. Oh, okay. We're, we're talking about different stories. Was there a love triangle where you had all pressured to put a love triangle? I mean, is that a solution? Mm. Is that something? Is that a save all? Where it's like, as long as there's a love triangle in it, the target audience, and pardon me for being so blunt, the target audience is so stupid that they will go gaga over it because there's a love triangle in it. We are aiming for the dirt here, folks. There's no need for any pop flies, let alone any uh, home runs in this vague sports analogy. These are <laughs> stupid people that will only respond if A, B, and C are present. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if marketing folks are saying that all the time. Because that's just the way marketing folks are. You know, they want a formula. They want it to be mathematical. A, B, and C is here. Therefore, D is the answer. And I know that you and I are much more of the uh, camp that, you know, people are smart. Although I think the the expression goes, a person is smart. People are dumb. Is but, that from Firefly? I don't know. Okay. But, yeah, I know that we're, we're on that, you know, the... the Persons are smart enough to see that, to see when they're being manipulated, and to see when they're not being manipulated and enjoy what is true and real, and to be upset. You know, to know better, you know, to watch a movie called Tangled and know that it, the title sucks and that it should be called Rapunzel and they screwed up, and, you know, that people would go to see the movie anyways, even if it was called Rapunzel because it was a good movie. But yeah, I don't know. If a love triangle is that saving thing. So far, I haven't incorporated love triangles into my story per se. Although, strangely, I guess maybe there's a love triangle in this story. Not really. There's a quadrangle. There's four people involved. What? <laughs> I don't know what that means. Well, okay. The One of them's a ghost. People though. talked about uh, the host... And that, that had a love quadrangle in it, but there was actually a triangle. And I, gosh, I, having not seen the host or read the host, I guess I shouldn't even have brought it up. But when we were complaining about Lone Ranger that day, and I was saying you could make all those parallels between the Pirates of the Caribbean and the Lone Ranger that were there by design? I mean, what, these screenwriters that wrote both they're more talented than that, right? They wouldn't just write the same movie again unless they, they were trying they were to follow to do so. follow some kind of pattern of, of, you know, the A plus B and you have to have this and that and this is this and that. And C, mm -hmm. I don't, I, well, like when we would watch the golden age of Disney animated films, you would see a pattern emerge in these things. Where it's like, okay, we introduced these characters, and now main character sings the I Want song. And then we you know, do this, and now something changes, and something magical opens up the realm of possibilities. And there's a song there to show you what the possibilities are. You know, you ain't never had a friend like me, kind of thing. Uh, and we have a villain, and the villain has their song. You know, whether it's Poor Unfortunate Souls, or whether it's uh, Be Prepared, or whether it's Jafar didn't have a song. But uh, no one sleeps like Gaston, takes a shit like Gaston. No one's big uh -huh. big dick is incredibly big like Gaston. That, you know, all that, 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 you, you can see, okay, here's the pattern and, and, and all that. But we've seen those work and we've seen those unwork. Where you're just like, oh, come on. That's just, that's too, really, like, that's, uh, this is the Ariel song. I can see her putting her hand, you know. Do you know what I'm talking about? Sure. 
you know, people can can boil things down to a mathematical formula and say this is how something works. And in theory, I mean, even the hero with a thousand faces, hero's journey, Joseph Campbell, where you say, okay, this is how Lord of the Rings works, and this is how Star Wars works. It doesn't mean that if you follow that, your story's going to be good. You know what I mean? The same thing with the love triangle or whatever, or the taking the the basic skeleton of Twilight or taking the basic skeleton of... I mean, Harry Potter's skeleton is like a brachiosaurus. I don't know that you can just knock that down, although everybody has. I've read a couple of those where I was like, wow. Okay, so that's McGonagall. All right, but which one... Is, oh my gosh, there's Hermione. She's the same character. You know, I, I, anyway. But the deal with YA is... Because the target audience is new to reading, they're an easier sell? Perhaps. The funny thing about YA is that it's read by even guys as old as you. Uh, People have a tendency to try it. Um, I'm not sure what the deal is with that. But I'm it's an insanely like, lonely person. It's, but, I'm not the target audience at all. I, I shouldn't be reading these things. I don't know. I mean, I read uh, the Hunger Games series not because uh, a child recommended or a, a young adult recommended I read it, but because a bunch of adults were reading it, and I, oh, what's this all about? And so I read it as well. And Harry Potter was the same thing. And many other series. And some of those books aren't that way. Like, I didn't read Percy Jackson because adults were reading it. My kids were reading it, and so I read it with them. Um, But in general, I think it might be... That might be another reason why you get so many YA books. Is because that just adds another quadrant to your uh, possible readership. You get a bunch of adults that will read it as well as younger people. So, uh, I don't know. It may be... I mean, when it comes down to it, even adults, there's lots and lots and lots of adults that are new to reading, that are completely clueless. I remember I worked at this job just out of college while I could do nothing with my film degree. I worked at a grocery store. We would stock the shelves all night long. And uh, as we'd be going around making the store look pretty and pulling all the cans to the front and all that kind of stuff, we'd just be talking about whatever. And often we'd talk about, you know, books that we'd read or movies that we'd seen. And I would tell people my story ideas that I had for stories and stuff like that. And uh, there was this one guy, I swear he'd never read a book in his life. He'd seen plenty of movies and stuff. And, and, and then we'd tell him, like, the, the book that the movie came from. And, oh, this is what they really did in The Running Man. And it was like this and it was like that. And this guy would be like, oh, my gosh, what movie was that? Because I totally, I'm like, no, 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 this was a book. Like, oh, I'd really like to see that. That's interesting. <laughs> And, uh, I, you know, I, I can understand that though, because I'm so much more a movie guy than a book guy. And a lot of times I'll read a book and go, oh boy, visually this would make such a good movie. Or I can see this part in my head. Oh, that would be really neat. A neat movie scene. And that, and so maybe I'm as bad as that guy who said, what movie is that? Well, he just doesn't, didn't read books. And there's a tons of people that would be really interested in books if they just dipped their toe in finally and maybe that's what YA is doing for even a lot of adults where you say oh is it just because these people are are young haven't read anything so they don't know any better and that's why this stuff resonates to them maybe that's even partially the the case for the adults as well is that these books are pulling people that didn't used to read into the reading circle and so they're all like wow this is the best book I ever read it's also the first book I've ever read well, it's, it's, as long as it's a positive experience for them and it makes them want to read more, I guess eventually they will gain experience and they'll be able to say, oh, you know, just kind of like when you and I were kids and we were so easy to please with movies and you watch <laughs> a movie that we loved in those days and realize, oh, that's actually pretty crappy. Yeah. But we didn't know. It was all new and all that stuff. And it's just, I guess people learn by experience. By the time I'm actually smart and confident I will be ready to die. And that sucks. (laughs) (laughs) But you will also be already dead for 15 years by that point. (laughs) You're instilling me with an awful lot of confidence here. Uh, Shoot, I have more I want to say. I'm going to come back tomorrow and say it to you. Is that okay? Okay. Thanks for listening, folks, to the worst marathon ever. We'll see you next time. Sure is.
That Gives My Go is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Apparently, the creative in Creative Commons doesn't mean anything. 